In today's video, the spiritual Oof. showman, Matty B, is going to give us seven reasons why he thinks the Earth is flat. Go nuts on my nuts. So to start off at number one, the first reason why I believe the Earth is flat is because, well, I believe we have a firmament that encapsulates us. But we don't though, do we? Now, the reason why I believe this is a couple reasons. Number one, we have the religious texts, not of just Christianity, but all religious texts depicted of all cultures are all saying the same thing. Okay, so all religious texts are all saying exactly the same thing. And the one thing that they all have in common is that they are all not scientific textbooks. They're storybooks, and as such, they're open to misinterpretation. And I think we should just take the hint. Well, no, because it isn't a hint. They really aren't scientific textbooks. They're all religious storybooks and should be treated as such. They depict that the Earth is a flat plane, a stationary plane, okay, with a dome over it. That's what they all have in common. Yeah, and I know something else that they all have in common as well. They are not science textbooks. God, I hate repeating myself. Did I mention I've got new glasses? Now, that's not the only thing that can persuade someone to believe a certain thing, right? Because the Bibles and stuff, all that is manipulated. I, it's half-truths. Well, if you know it's manipulated and only half-truths, how can you possibly claim that it supports a flat Earth? Uh, on purpose, right? To really buy, have us buy into it, but low-key, they're smarter than us. And not that they're smarter than us, but they have a head start on us where they're able to make it so... Sure, it seems truthful, but it's actually really keeping you disempowered. Ah, so it's half truthful on purpose. And the people that wrote it, they are smarter or they're not smarter. Wait, so the, so the Bible doesn't say the earth is flat. Or it does say the earth is flat. I'm so confused. And a perfect example of that related to the Bible, I don't want to say, spend too much time on this, is the whole savior complex with with Christians, you know, they, they think, you know, Jesus is going to return and he's going to, he's going to save the day and there's going to be just a great awakening that is just going to completely just save us all, right, from the evil people. And that's just, that's just a trap, right? And, and people put that same savior complex into relationships, into governmental figures, instead of going inside to yourself and finding your own sovereignty from within, which is what I think God, Jesus, really wanted us to take home. Yeah, thanks for that, but can we at least try and keep on topic? Unless, of course, I'm not following because you're just smarter, but not smarter than me. Now, the second thing as to why the firmament is true is, well, there's a thing called Operation Fishbowl. <laughs> this is going to be good. So Operation Fishbowl was a series of high-altitude nuclear tests carried out by the US. And I'm not really sure how that helps prove a firmament, so carry on. And I don't recommend looking this up on Google because really all the Google tabs that they're going to show you are censored. They're only going to show you what they want to see. So it's very tough to find this information in this day and age. They've tightened up a lot on the internet with what they show and what they don't allow. So keep that in mind. But Operation Fishbowl is something that I've seen with my own two eyes of videos of documented proof of them shooting missiles at the fishbowl at the dome trying to break through it. This happened back in the 1960s, I think it was. Hold on a second, how bloody old are you? You saw it with your own eyes in the 1960s? Very interesting, because Matty B seems to have found the fountain of youth. Unless, of course, when he says he saw it with his own eyes, he means that he used his own eyes to watch YouTube videos from other conspiracy theorists. And I would imagine he tells you to be cautious when Googling Operation Fishbowl is because him and other conspiracy theorists don't actually want you to find the real information, which was that it was just to test how much damage was done by these nuclear devices and what the effects of high yield explosions would be against ballistic missile RVs. Another reason is a rainbow test, okay? We're still in the firmament here. There's, there's multiple layers here on, on why I believe in the firmament. Now, this is a rainbow test. You can do this with a, th with a third grader or fifth grader, or whatever. All you need to do is just spray a water hose outside, right? And you can see the rainbow. 
When, when the sun is out and, and you have the water and you have the light, you can get a rainbow and you can try this for yourself. Now try and do that same thing inside your house. You can't, why? That's because it takes three key ingredients to make a rainbow. The first is water, the second is light, the third is a reflection, okay? So what is reflecting when we're outside? What could possibly be reflecting? The dome. Rainbow tests, eh? Now we've talked about the rainbows and the domes in the video I made about my pal Barney. So look it up on my channel if you wanna see it. And I seriously doubt that even a third grader would be dumb enough to believe that rainbows are caused by a reflection off a dome. And why can't you do this experiment inside your house? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's got something to do with the fact that rainbows are actually caused by sun's rays reflecting water droplet and atmospheric conditions. Now I know that some flat earthers believe that the sun is local, but I don't think any of them believe that it's so local you can take it indoors with you. The same can be said for nuclear bombs as well. It, it takes the same shape, the rainbow takes the same shape, they all take the same shape. And Hillary Clinton was also quoted even saying, like, something like, We will soon break through the barrier. Barrier of what? Really? Hillary Clinton? She was talking about the glass ceiling as a metaphor. The unacknowledged barrier to her political career. And in the context she was using, it was, it was in response to her losing the Democratic primaries in 2008. Moving on to reason number two. The North Pole and Antarctica. Why is it that there's never been a commercial flight to fly over the North Pole? Why is it that there's a treaty signed by all the countries in the world that Antarctica exploration is off limits. So the flights or lack of flights is a very complicated answer which I may go into in a separate video. Let me know if you want to see that down in the comments. But in its simplest terms, we just don't need to fly over Antarctica or the North Pole. And even though in some cases it may appear when you look at it on a map to make that particular route a lot quicker, in reality it wouldn't. Well, it would and it wouldn't. I'll explain what I mean. It would make flights much more expensive due to the modifications that they would need to do to the aeroplanes to make them capable of flying in such cold weather conditions. And for commercial airlines, it's just not financially viable. So it's cheaper in the long run for them to just avoid flying over Antarctica and the North Pole. And the Antarctic Treaty again. All the Antarctic Treaty did was make the Antarctic into a scientific preserve. No conspiracy involved. Unless it's like specific scientists that have to sign contracts and have to do certain things. What are they hiding? Snow? Why can't we go to the edge of our Earth, which is actually how it's depicted? Excellent question. Why can't we go to the edge? I mean, apart from the obvious, which is that there is no edge because the Earth is a sphere and spheres don't have edges. Antarctica is the round uh, on the sides and it's much higher than any mountain or anything. We're like sunken in, actually. We're sunken in and then the, the Antarctica are like the walls outside of this Earth. Right? And I just find it so interesting that we can't go out there and we don't fly over the North Pole. And if you look at the flight patterns, the flight patterns on a globe just do not make sense. They're inefficient. They're just not effective, right? The flight patterns that they take, the routes that they take to Bali, Australia, all these things is just not efficient. But on a flat earth, it makes sense. Does it though? Because as far as I can tell, nothing makes sense on a flat earth. Mainly because there is no flat earth, but, but what, no, there is no but. The earth isn't flat. Now, another thing too is Hitler's obsession. Okay, Hitler was once one of the biggest world powers and he wasn't obsessed with space. He didn't give a shit about space. What was he obsessed with? Uh, no comment. C can anyone else smell gas? What are they hiding? Why can't we fly over the North Pole? Why can't we go to the North Pole? How come when you look on Google Photos, you have the same thing depicted at the North Pole every single time? It's all just a big cover-up, in my opinion. I know why you can't. Just think about it. It's so obvious. Santa Claus. No, seriously, think about it. 
Just think about how busy Santa is. And he's a very private guy. He doesn't want any Tom, Dick or Harry knowing where he's from, where he lives. He doesn't want tourists traipsing all over the North Pole when he's busy trying to make toys. What do you mean it's a really stupid thing to believe? Is it any stupider than somebody believing that the Earth is flat? The most obvious one I think is, have you ever seen a curvature? On a plane, have you ever seen the curvature? I haven't, and I've gone on a lot of flights. You can even look at a, you can even, I've seen demonstrations of a red laser that is, you know, is straight goes across. I've seen it go across, like there's been dog, you can look at some on YouTube of people documenting, real life people documenting this. Or you can just do it yourself of a red la red laser that goes out over 100 miles, 200 miles. Oh, but I've only got a green laser. Would that work as well? And to answer your question, have you seen Curve? Everybody has seen Curve. Every time a ship disappears over the horizon bottom first. Curve. Every time the sun rises. Curve. Every time you see a lunar eclipse. Curve. These things are all only possible because we live on a sphere. Now, the fourth reason why is the sun and the moon, okay? And also the stars, right? Okay, so if, w if we're accepting the globe, we're accepting the heliocentric model, which means we're rotating at some unbelievable pace and we're just flying through space at just insurmountable, I can't remember the, how many miles per hour we're, we're traveling, but if this is the case, why is it that you can take the sun or the moon any day of the year, calculate it any year you want, it's always the exact same. The patterns are the same, the star constellations are the same. What, are they all traveling and rotating with us at the same time too? Yes! You do realize that you're slowly debunking yourself, don't you? And ask yourself this question, how is it that we are so accurately able to predict things that are going to happen? Is it maybe because we're able to use the very accurate data that we get from understanding the true shape of the Earth? And the rate at which it rotates? A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Basically everything you just said, we know because mankind has been able to establish through scientific research and observation that the Earth is a sphere. And in the case of us globetards, we don't need to fudge the data to make it match our narrative. Because it isn't really a narrative, it's just reality. And also, how come in the daytime I can see the moon? Because we live on a globe! How many times have I got to say it? The moon rises in the east and sets in the west. And because the earth rotates, not spins, from west to east, if you look at the moon every night for a few consecutive nights, you'll notice that it becomes slightly more easterly as it gets closer to being a full moon. But in Australia, where they should be seeing the moon, they can see it too. Because if you look at a globe, right, Australia is like here and the United States is like here. So if I'm able to see the moon, how is Australia able to see the moon too? Does not make sense on the globe. Right, no, he wasn't completely clear there, but if he means at the same time, then it depends on a couple of factors. For example, if somebody lives on the east coast of Australia, then they can see the moon at the same time as somebody living on the west coast of the United States of America. But it will be very, very low on the horizon. But the more interesting question would be, and the one that I have yet to see a flat earther answer, is how is it that people who live south of the equator see a moon which is upside down when compared to the moon that is seen by people who live north of the equator? How exactly would that work on a flat earth? Another thing too about the sun and the moon is, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Alaska, but I have, and at a certain part of the year, uh, the sun never actually sets, or maybe it sets for like an hour or something, or half an hour or something. Why is that? I haven't got a clue, so I'm going to have to guess. It's because we live on a globe! I like this guy, he's actually really helpful. I'm having to do very little debunking. He's doing it all for me. The fifth one, the fifth reason, all right, we're on reason number five, is that we're told by NASA that we no longer have the technology to go to the moon but we just went to Mars? Oh dear, not this again. I don't understand what any of this has to do with the shape of the Earth. Whether we have or haven't been to the moon, whether we have or haven't just landed a rover on Mars. 
seems to me to be completely irrelevant to the shape of the earth. But in the name of fair play, I will let him have his say. And then also, if we have been to the moon, how come we didn't have travel to the moon? Why would we not do that? I don't know, for the same reason people don't go on holiday to the middle of the Sahara Desert. There's nothing there. What would you be going for? Apart from the experience, obviously, which would be absolutely amazing. But as far as it being of interest to space tourists, there's not much there to pique your interest. Now, another one, number six, is that there's never been an organic photo taken of Earth. Apart from this one. Oof which was taken by Apollo 17 in 1972 using a plain old ordinary 35mm camera with specially adapted Kodak film, yes. But it's just a photograph taken of Earth from a very long way away. Any photo that's been taken of Earth, literally, it, it's, it's like a legal thing. Like, you can look into this yourself. It's an estimation of the satellites. That's what they tell you. Oh, we do editing and color schemes, and it's an estimation of the satellites. This gives them the okay to do whatever they want, make whatever they want. And I've seen even video footage of computer nerds at NASA literally editing and creating things in space how they imagined it would be. Now, as far as I can tell, the denial of the images of Earth taken from space is all based around a flat earther's fear of being proven wrong. Because obviously, if they were to say, oh yeah, we accept that that's a real photograph of Earth, then obviously they can't claim that the Earth is flat because the photo proves otherwise. Now, the seventh reason, and the last reason why I don't believe in Earth, and there's probably many more, but these are just seven today, is to just, you can look up on YouTube, look up weather balloon flight to stratosphere. Now, you can watch this video for yourself. Again, it's so high in the sky, and there's not a single curvature at all. That's a really stupid thing to say, because you can look everything you can possibly think of up on YouTube. That doesn't necessarily guarantee that what you find will be true or accurate. And also, if there's no curve, why is it called the stratosphere? Why isn't it called the stratos flat? or the stratos level. And why is NASA the biggest purchaser of helium and we have weather balloons? Makes me think that satellites aren't actually orbiting in space, but actually we're keeping them up with weather balloons because they are the biggest purchasers of helium. And I, I forget how many millions, it's in the 50 or 100 million dollars a year that they spend on helium or every five years, some contract they signed. I don't have all the facts. I don't have all the answers. I'm not pretending to have all the answers. I'm not pretending to say the earth is 100% flat and there's no other question about it. Although I'm at 99.9%, uh, you know, it, it just comes down to questioning for yourself, figuring out your own truth. Hang on a second, Mr. Own Truth. That's just every flat earther's get out of jail free card. If I say it's my truth, then who are you to say that I'm wrong? Because it's my truth. It's what I believe within myself. The fact that there's no evidence supporting it is completely irrelevant because it's my truth. I've spent hundreds of hours, maybe not hundreds of hours on flat earth specifically, but in terms of searching for truth and finding out things, just the uncovering of everything and the synchronicities that I've found and just them contradicting themselves time and time again and lying and lying and lying. It just, I just don't trust them. Simple as that. And I think that's a big fundamental agreement or disagreement that I think a lot of people do have is a lot of people do like, they think the good of people. They think the good of our government and they think that they really are trying to, you know, they don't want to kill us. And I'm not saying they want to kill us. They just want to slowly kill us <laughs> and deceive us so we can be controlled and disempowered. Boom, there you go. The key to every conspiracy theorist, an inbuilt mistrust of anybody in a position of power or authority. And that's fine, because I happen to think myself that the world's governments do a lot of shady things that we will never get to find out about. But none of the things that they may or may not be doing would ever lead me to think that the Earth was flat. And so that brings me to why would they lie? 
why would they lie about this whole thing, right? Ooh, look out, he's got notes. So, the reason why they're lying is, for starters, they just simply want you to just not trust your own senses. You know, like, yeah, you know, like, I don't feel the Earth spinning and I don't see a curvature, but yeah, we're definitely spinning at thousands of miles an hour and we definitely have a curvature, even though I sent out a red laser out 200 miles and it didn't have any curvature over a solid layer body, body of water. Like, do you see the contradictions in ourselves? But from the womb, you know, our parents, they were taught that the globe was round and, and all this stuff, so the programming is deep. If there was programming, which I don't think there is, I can be pretty confident in saying it would be nowhere near as deep as the rabbit hole you would have need to have fallen down to believe what you believe. Now look, I've got no ill will towards Matty B. He does genuinely seem like a nice enough guy, but unfortunately for him and those around him, he does seem to have fallen down the flat earth rabbit hole. Is he different to any other flat earther? Absolutely not. They're all exactly the same. Wrong. Thanks for watching everybody, if it is your first time here, don't forget to give the video a like, hit the subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, I'm the Creaky Blinder, and I am out there. Take care everyone, bye bye. Alright, alright, watch this next, but before you do, make sure you subscribe, by order of the Creaky Blinder.